is the ESPN NBA Music. And tonight at 8.30, it's the Mavs season opener against Wemby Mania in San Antonio. This is Sean RJ and Bobby Belt was able to book basketball play-by-play -play voice for ESPN, Ryan Rucco, here on the Boomer Jacks Bar and Grill Hotline. Good morning, Ryan. How are you? I'm doing well, guys. How you doing? Doing well. Are you in Dallas right now? Uh, I hope I'm not in Dallas because the oh, game's sorry. in San Antonio. Yeah, sorry. Are you in so, Texas, my hey, bad. <laughs> hey, man, are you trying to trick me? You're trying to, you're trying to make me miss my first day of work of the season. I don't want that. <laughs> hey, this <laughs> no, is, I'm in San Antonio. This is a hell of a broadcast team. You're doing the game with Richard Jefferson and J.J. Redick plus Cassidy. We've had Cassidy on the show. Well, t talk about this mix that you guys are going to have going there on the sideline. Yeah. I mean, it's I'm so excited to work with uh, with with JJ and RJ and Cassidy. Uh, we're you know we're all really tight off the court, uh, which I think helps a lot. Cassidy and I have been friends for I feel like 10, 11 years now. We had our first assignment together doing a random Boston College football game uh, over a decade ago. And um, when I think I had I don't even know if I I had just started doing MBA for us uh, at ESPN. And, uh, and J.J. and Richard and I have gotten really close working together over the last couple of years. Richard, I've worked together for years with Nets. And then J.J. really gotten to know well uh, over the last couple of years. And I think, you know, we all, we all just absolutely love this job. We love the league. We love the game. We're obsessed with the NBA. And, uh, and hopefully you're going to hear that, that joy and the preparation uh, and passion we have uh, for the league and our jobs uh, in our broadcast. Is JJ aware of like the likability turnaround he's had? I mean, when he was at Duke, I mean, they he they just hated him, man. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's definitely aware of that, uh, and and we make him aware of it too. Um, <laughs> he, but he's it, it's you know I think people really appreciate that he is always honest with what he thinks, and uh, and he doesn't he doesn't necessarily care if. You know, there's a certain expectation of how he's going to interpret or react to one thing versus another. How he feels in a moment, he is always going to express. And I think an audience really appreciates that. Obviously, people get to hear more of his takes uh, when he's on first take, not to, you know, be punny there, and then also on his podcast. Uh, and so he has a, a platform for sharing that. And Richard as well has a platform for sharing that when it comes to NBA Today uh, or his time where he'll be on Countdown, or his podcast, Road Trip. And so I think both of those guys are, they're just so comfortable with being honest. And, you know, they they really are, are researched and prepared and thoughtful in, in why they are expressing different things. And I think people appreciate that. So for JJ, I think, you know, he didn't necessarily have those platforms of exposure when he was at Duke, right? People just saw this young kid training three after three and, and, and people love to hate Duke. And then they've gotten to know him and his personality and how intelligent he is and, and how, uh, how researched he is. And they're like, all right, all right. I, I like him. He's not afraid to say what's on his mind. And it's usually coming from a place of incredible uh, credibility. Ryan Rucco, ESPN play-by-play, -play, will have the call tonight. Mavs Spurs to open up the NBA season. How many Wemby packages and features do you guys have in the truck? <laughs> Good question. We're going to have our uh, our production meeting in a couple hours, so I'll, uh, I'll have a specific number for you shortly. But, yeah, I mean, obviously, Wemby is the the featured star of the evening um, in a game with, you know, quite a few stars um, and, and a lot of interesting storylines. But this is a – there's always excitement around you know, rookies who are high picks debuting – but this is a rare, rare situation, right? We are talking about a potential generational star. We are talking about the most hyped rookie since LeBron James. I will throw in the caveat that Zion also was a, an outlier in the hype uh, a couple of years ago, but Wemby even surpasses that. And so this is a really unique and, and special debut, regardless of what Victor Wembenyama does or doesn't become as an NBA player, we know that this is a game that is always going to be looked back on as a memorable night in the NBA. 
and it's going to be one of those archived games. So you definitely, from the production angle, prepare to document the historical aspects of it, knowing that chances are the same way we look back on LeBron James' debut, right? This is going to be memorable regardless of what happens from here forward. People are going to certainly always look back on what Victor Wembanyama did his first night on an NBA floor. What are some of the bold opinions that Redick or Jefferson or yourself have had about what Wembenyama is going to be? I mean, I, RJ came out last year and and he, he said he's the greatest draft prospect of all time. People are like, well, what about LeBron James? And he had said, hey, if him and LeBron James were both in the same draft, you know, people would probably take Victor Wembenyama because of just how unique it is to have a guy who's 7'4" with the skill set he has. So that's probably the, you know, the hottest take RJ's had about it. Um, I think we both are just amazed at seeing what he's capable of defensively already. You know, I believe there has never been a rookie who has made first team all defense. And I'm curious if that will change this season. It's only a few games. It's only the preseason, right? But he led the preseason in blocks. We saw him do some ridiculous things defensively when it came to helping, recovering, getting out to the three-point line. I think we're going to see him probably set the NBA record for most blocked three-pointers in a season. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I'll be – if it doesn't happen this year, it's happening very early in his career. And just in case you guys are wondering, well, who, who even has that record for most blocked three-pointers – in a season because it would seem obscure. It's a, it's a record that we can't go back that far. We can only go back to 96, 97, but right now it's Chris Boucher who has the record of 25 <laughs> All right. in the 2021 season. And then after that, it's Mitchell Robinson and Matisse Seibel. So guys who you, you would think could be good at that very unique skill, but I think Wemby is going to take it to a whole nother level. Um, and I think, you know, for me, what I'm most in, interested in and, and what we were talking about last night at dinner is how does he influence wins and losses, and how quickly do we feel that, right? Because you guys know, in the NBA, true stars influence wins and losses. It's not about the points and the assists and the rebounds and the blocks, because somebody's going to get those. If you are going to be a true difference maker in the NBA, we see it in the wins and the losses. So I'm curious. Now, nobody's expecting the Spurs to come out and win 50 games in his rookie year, but can he, can he have the Spurs – you know, fighting for a play-in? Could they win, you know, 35 games? I mean, I think if they get to that number, that would be a pretty remarkable impact considering where the Spurs were a season ago. Is it possible for him to hit his hype, though? Like, even hit his ceiling? I mean, the, you got people saying if he's, if he's Kevin Durant that it's a, it's a failure of a career. Is it even possible for him to match that? Well, that's – to me, that's, that's unfair, right? Because mm -hmm. Kevin Durant's a top 15 player of all time, right? Or top 15-ish like if Victor Wembanyama ends up that, I would say he's definitely hit his hype and made good. And, and I think it's, it's hard to obviously project ahead to what he will or won't accomplish over his, you know, hopefully 20 years in this league. But we have an example of somebody who has done it remarkably in LeBron James, right? If you want to talk about a guy who somehow lived up to all the, you know, inflated hype going into his career where it felt like there's just no way this kid can be this good. And then was you look at LeBron James right now. He's an outlier. He's, you know, a top two player of all time. It's unfair to set those expectations for Wemby, but at least it can give us some hope that yes, even when the hype is unreal, it can be met. It's possible at least. And I think what gives me confidence in Wemby having the best chance possible to get there is his mentality guys. He is just, it, you know, Forget the intelligence, which is clearly there. His EQ is off the charts. And you, you listen to the way this guy talks about, you know, just sort of the universe and consciousness and the experience of basketball. And he just sounds so mature, but also like he has a beautiful perspective with everything he's dealing with. And Greg Popovich said the thing he was most concerned about was talking to Wemby about how he's going to deal with the attention and the hype and felt like it was something he was going to have to continually communicate with Wemby about. And he said, after a, you know, a couple conversations, getting to know him a little bit, he realized 
this is something he's never going to have to talk to him about because he is completely unbothered by the attention, completely unmoved, stays exactly the person that he is. And so for me, I think that is going to give him the best chance to maximize his potential because that's going to give him the best chance to weather whatever failures, whatever storms, setbacks, injuries he deals with throughout his career, having his head on the way that he does. We're talking with Ryan Rucco. He will be on the call tonight for Maverick Spurs on ESPN. Ryan, you got a, a close-up look uh, at Kyrie Irving just covering Nets games yeah. for Yes. Um, what do you think about that kyrie Luca pairing, what we saw for the 16 games they played together at the end of last year, and, and what you think they can be this year? Is that a coupling you think can work? So I think that, you know, one thing with Kyrie last season, it obviously went sideways at the end because of him all of a sudden wanting out right when he didn't get his extension, but he had played incredible basketball and he had been very engaged defensively. And one thing we know about Kyrie, you know, for all of his shortcomings defensively, when he locks in, he can be good on that end. The best example of course is the 2016 finals with the way he was able to defend Steph Curry at the end of that series. He, I think, also is going to benefit from having, you know, a, I know that Luke has been out of practice for a while and everything since he got hurt in Spain, but I think he benefits from the certainty of knowing this is his teammate, this is the pairing, the off-season run that they did get together, preseason run they did get together, even if it was limited. Um, and they're just both, like, they're so talented. And you guys know from covering the league, watching the league, when you have two ridiculously talented players, they usually figure it out, right? In the, in the NBA, they usually figure it out. Even if you feel like some of the skill set is duplicative or maybe they have similar shortcomings, they usually figure it out and are great together. Now, what does that mean? Like, can Dallas be so good offensively that it helps make up for any deficiencies on the defensive end? Can Grant Williams make that big of a difference? Can Josh Green take that leap? Can Derek Lively be relied upon to communicate on the back line defensively as a rookie? It's sort of an unfair expectation, right? But I think that Kyrie and Luka will be able to be the best versions of themselves offensively. I have no doubt about that and the way they play off each other. And it's not the same thing but probably the best basketball I've ever seen Kyrie Irving play was in the first year with James Harden, after Harden got traded over. When Harden was the, the point guard, it was, there was a lot of questions early on. Okay, who's going to be the point guard? Is it going to be Kyrie? Is it going to be James Harden? And after a few games, it was like, hey, and Kyrie even said to James, you're the point guard, I'm playing off the ball. And Kyrie was unbelievably efficient, 50-40-90. And, of course, there were still moments where – ball is in his hands and he is running the offense but I just thought it made Kyrie at his best and he has that opportunity here with Luca while also being able to afford Luca some opportunities to get off the ball himself so that he's not quite as taxed as he was last year sans Jalen Brunson so I think the defensive deficiencies for the team as a whole certainly are real and going to be watched um, and you need some guys to take leaps and we'll see whether or not they're ready but I think Luca and Kyrie are going to be excellent together. Ryan, we got about thirty seconds, but you got the Yankee experience, Yes Network, uh, so you know you know your baseball. Who wins the World mm -hmm. Series? I think the Rangers win the World Series. I yes. mean, I I love the way the Diamondbacks play, um, but this Rangers team, I, I saw them up close a couple of times this season. I call both Yankees Rangers series. I just love the diversity of their offense, how scary their hitters are, but the different kind of hitters they have, and then their rotation. They've got those top-end starters, and I love Bruce Bochy, so I'm going Texas. He did it in 30 seconds. He did. No one does Ooh. that. That's a professional. <laughs> yes, it he is. got the cue in the air. Ryan Rucco tonight for Mavs Spurs in San Antonio. Cannot wait to hear this team with Jefferson and J.J. Redick. Thank you so much for the time, man. Have a great season. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Enjoy it. <laughs>